The following documents and recordings are the 19th installment in a compilation detailing the events of the repair team sent to Outpost Freestead, consisting of Dr. Rosa De La Torre, Walter Heath, Graham Kasner, Dr. Karina Schumacher-Weiss, and Jonas Thorison. In the winter months, Gau storms in Svalbard can reach wind speeds of 130 km per hour. Accompanied by or following snowfall, such storms can reduce visibility dramatically, more so in the winter months of the polar night. During these storms, travel is not advised. The White Bolt Following the previous instalment, Dr. Rosa De La Torre, Graeme Kasner, and Jonas Thorison face the confusing tunnels of the catacombs with growing despair, and Mr. Kasner has disappeared beneath the chill waters of the cave. This first recording is a continuation from the phone of Dr. Rosa De La Torre. No, no, te puedes ir. Vuelve, vuelve. Rosa. We need to go. The thing will come back any moment now. So good, Graham. He's down there somewhere. Can we throw a rope down? Will it sink? I don't see his light. It took him. Get away from... Shit, Rosa! Something's down there. Down in that freezing salt water took him. And something in these caves wants to get you. We need to get out of this cave. We need to focus. We can still find a way out of here, right? Right. Graham had the compass. Graham had the map. It was in his pocket. We have his back. The lights. Jonas. He had the shotgun. Shit. Rosa, come on. It's coming. We need to hide. Wait. Grab the bag. Graham's. If we keep running like this, we're going to get lost. Fuck it. We are lost. Lost is better than dead. For now. We don't even know where that thing is. If it gets harder to hear, I think we're doing well. Hide. In here. Hide. Hide. How close is it? I can't tell. It's gone. It's dark. We need to keep looking. Like you said, we need to find a way. Hands up, follow the walls. Walk slowly, and let's keep looking. Kastner had the gun. It went down there with him. In the water. We still have the flares. We can still get out of this. Messages are getting narrower. Can we still fit? For now. Though it is getting tight. Not claustrophobic, I hope. No, thankfully. Keep going. If the passage gets too small, we'll turn around and try another. But I'll be damned if we miss something. Do you think we can afford to turn the lights back on? Can't see a damn thing. Wait a while. If we don't hear it for a few minutes, we'll turn a light on. Wider at the bottom. If we want to try this tunnel, we should crawl. Me parece que esta es una muy mala idea. I haven't heard the creature in a while. Rosa, we should get the things we need from Kastner's bag. Bringing it with us is a burden. Rosa? See, si, I heard you. Tienes razón. Turn on a light. Do it. It's. He's got shells, notes, his camera, general stuff. Chemical lights. Hand me one. We we'll break one and store the rest. The notes, the shells, the camera, documents. Take them all. Do we... Do we just leave it here? Everything else? We have to. It's stuff we don't need. 
We can't afford the weight to bring it along. Chestnut's a practical man. I'm sure he'd understand. <coughs> Dios mío, te vas a encontrar con otro gran hombre allá arriba. Un muy buen hombre. Oh, piadoso corazón de Jesús, siempre presente en el sacramento. Siempre lleno de amor ardiente por las pobres almas cautivas del purgatorio. Ten piedad de las almas de quien llega a ti con humildad. Do we honestly have time for prayers? Shh. No seas muy severo en vuestro juicio. Y deja que algunas gotas de vuestra preciosa sangre caigan en las devoradoras llamas y sed. Oh, piadoso Señor, que vuestras ángeles conduzcan el alma de quien a ti clama a un lugar de descanso y paz eterna. Amén. Amen. I didn't take you for religious. After all this, if there are now demons and hell in my life, I would like to think there are also angels and heaven. You knew that prayer by heart. And I know many more. I grew up very Catholic. Let's get moving. It looks like there are two large crawl spaces. So up or down? It says I'll be in the lead. Up, please. It looks larger. I'm not sure my shoulders will fit in the bottom passage. Get moving then. Let's go home. Here a long period of slow crawling can be heard, during which very little is said and even less can be easily discerned due to the phone bumping against either the walls of the cave or Dr. De La Torre's jacket. The following is from the same recording, 11 minutes later. Sorry, Jonas. What? What? Not to worry you, Jonas, mm. but this is terrifying. Terrifying? For you? I'm going to new territory with every second of it. thinking I'll see its eyes glow in the green light. Said, Let's talk about something else. Should we turn around? How does the tunnel look? It's fine. We're getting headspace soon. Feeling claustrophobic now? No, just worried. Perhaps we should have chosen the other path. So, then we'll return to it eventually. Thankfully, I don't think those things can fit in here. Hard to know. No more wishful thinking. Did you ever think you'd end up here in Spalbach doing what you do? No, I'm a dollar matter who then got married. Before in my younger days, I thought I'd work as tourists with the land. Project management still, but not this. Did you always want to be an adventurous doctor for hire? I always wanted to be a doctor. I had very little family support for my decision, but hoped for it. I wanted to be an oncologist and work in the US. The closer I came to that goal, the less I wanted it. I wanted adventure. Why oncology? Fuck cancer. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> what are your plans when you get home? My girl's birthday is coming up. Something for them. Fun and wonderful. Just a moment to relax. Come here. You? Maybe something more stable. A hospital job in Spain. Little apartment. Drinks on the beach. A dog. I could do with some monotony. Not back in Mexico? No. It will always be my homeland, but it is no longer my home. <laughs> Hasn't been for years. <laughs> I thought you said it was going to get taller. Yeah, it gets taller, but still narrow. What is it, Jonas? Take the light. Hide it. Yeah, tough. Uh, ahead of us, there, there's a light. Blue light, like ice, a way out. Gracias, niño Jesus. It looks like... Sunlight? There is no sunlight. Not now. I can't make it out. Perhaps a camp light? LEDs or something. Get closer to it. Go! Sunlight, fire, lava, glowing mushrooms. No me importa. It's white light. Just move slowly. No sudden movements. If it's something alive, let's stay unseen and safe as long as possible. Grab your ice axe. It keeps making noise. <sighs> What? I can't see. Crawl 
not. Uh, Come, careful. There's a drop. Increíble. ¿Qué es? I've never seen anything like this. Perhaps a planetarium with constellations drawn out? New experiences are a common thing down here, it seems. What do you think it is? Not a planetarium. Look at all the writing. Impressive. I don't recognize any of these symbols. I have no idea. Not a language I speak, or know at all for that matter. Maybe something from India, Nepal? How are they glowing? Glow in the dark paint? Somehow I don't think so. The vaults are so smooth, like metal. This is all man made, not just the carvings, but the cave. It must be. Feel this. Some of these carvings, they look familiar. Yes. The statues, the black statues in the town. This here, it looks like the orc. Look at this, Jonas. Over here. It's a creature carving. The skeleton we saw in the cave. Look, here is the long jaw, the short limbs, the slender fingers. The carving is accurate, but this is... Is it glass? Is there light on the other side? It's solid rock, Jonas. But yes, it looks like lit white opal. What's that? Esto es muy molesto. No se me quita. My ears won't stop humming. It's not me, then. Or you. There's a hum. Well, at least that's good. This is a door. Uh, uh, not really a door, but a carving of a door. Oh, the chemical light is still working. We should move on soon. Yes, but I need a breather. I'm going to take a pencil rubbing of some of these markings. Maybe we can get it translated when we lead this shit to the world. I can't get the heart out of my throat. Jonas, we know this. Currently, we are safe. We'll continue to search for an exit. We can stay on guard, but if you keep panicking, you will die of a heart attack before you can get its teeth in you. But quiet down, or it will certainly find us. But it will get you, as it did the others. And I'll die down here. Helvitis, anskuls, fardeta, beinus du leiter helvitis. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. We'll get out. recording continues for some time in silence. The pencil rubbings of the wall carvings made by Dr. Rosa de la Torre were recovered, along with the notes she took regarding the room. The rubbing shows the well-defined lines of the carving, precise both in gentle curves and sharp angles, as to keep a consistent width of 11 millimeters. At first glance, the smaller symbols, some of which were also added as drawings to Dr. de la Torre's notes, appear as a mix of 6th century Tamil script and the Pallava script, historically scripts of the Indian subcontinent. This is an uneducated guess, but it allows a general understanding of the script's visual form. I sent a scan of the script's drawings and rubbings to a talented epigrapher for closer examination. Upon closer and more educated analysis, he was unable to determine a noticeable sentence or word structure, and only minimal pattern repetition. The script, at this point, is in limbo regarding classification as a script at all. The epigrapher requested permission to send the script sample to a friend of his, a historical linguist, 
in further hopes to determining any information. I gave him permission, but have yet to receive additional information. He has no information regarding the script's origin. The rubbing of the larger glyph carving depicts an animal of some kind. Although the rubbing is incomplete due to the paper's small size, several pieces can be pieced together to estimate the glyph's shape. My speculation is it depicts a walrus or other long-tusked aquatic mammal. The style is similar to that of the consistent width, precise, straight-line carvings of the Nazca lines. The carved curve defining the body of the beast also defines the elongated tusks and the shape of the head before trailing off down the back and off the paper. Dr. Della Torre also took several written notes. They are as follows. Criam ya no está. Jonas y yo nos rastomos por un tiempo. A través de las cavernas, seguíamos buscando un ser. Graham is gone. Jonas and I crawled for a while through the caverns, still looking for an exit. We found a cave, fully carved, top to bottom. No need for light. The lines carved into the stone glow with white light. Animal pictures, glyphs on walls and curved ceiling. Whale, walrus, fish, eel, narwhal, other aquatic animals. Some share similarities to the statues from town. Took a rubbing with paper and pencil from my pack. Some kind of script. Also took a rubbing sample. Unidentifiable. Closest I can think of is Napali. I tried to write down some to examine later. White light, but still not bright enough to read easily. Another carving on the far wall. Large, more than two meters tall, just under two meters wide. A door. Simple double door, glowing from carved edges. It almost seemed like a light shimmering from under the carving. No movement when pressed. Solid rock. Where is the light coming from? The following is the continuation of the previous recording from the phone of Dr. Rosa Della Torre. anything like it. Yes. Jonas, come look at this. Rosa? Rosa? Okay. Rosa, it's not me! Rosa, it's not me! Jonas! Jonas, it's not me! Jonas, it's not This concludes those documents and recording regarding the team's discovery of the carved room within the Labyrinthian catacombs. This completes the 19th collection of information regarding the repair team at Outpost Freestead. The White Vault 